Hey there, YouTube fans, my loyal 20 or so subscribers that watch my videos. I'm going to be a little more interactive with you now in the intro to this video, and I'm going to ask you a question. What is your favorite Christmas movie? Because, yeah, now that it's midway through January, I figured it's the perfect time to talk about Christmas. That'll get me the views. But anyway, Christmas movies. Or, uh, holiday pictures, if you want to sound pretentious and piss off Bill O'Reilly. What's your favorite? I'm guessing some of you will say this. Or this. Or if you're feeling funny, you might say this. And if you're correct, you'll say this. Well, my favorite Christmas movie, because yes, this is all just a way for me to say my favorite Christmas movie, nobody actually cares when they ask you a question. The dude at work asking you about how your weekend went doesn't actually care about how your weekend went. He just wants to tell you about how he went to some golf concert boat thing. Okay, well, none of these Christmas movies that are mentioned, none of those are my favorite Christmas movie. My favorite Christmas movie is... Well, if you've looked at the title of this video, you would probably guess... The wrong guess, because Jingle All the Way is my favorite Christmas movie. Not really, it's Die Hard. Except still, sort of, not really, because there is quite the technical debate on Die Hard being a Christmas movie or not. So, if it is a Christmas movie, then it's my favorite. If it isn't, then, uh, yeah, Christmas Vacation is the best. But Jingle All the Way is still super underrated. But you know what? Forget Christmas movies. Because this video has nothing to do with them. I don't even know why I brought them up. I think I was trying to think of a way to begin this video and figured asking for, like, a specific comment would do the trick, but now it doesn't seem to be working, so don't comment your favorite Christmas movie. Instead, leave a comment of how I should begin my videos. Seriously, I need help beginning videos. I have no idea what I'm doing, and I have no idea how to get to the main point of this video. I have no idea how to segue into talking about what I want to talk about, so instead I'm just going to cut to explosions or something in the middle of my- in 1988, director John McTiernan gifted the world with Die Hard. It's hard, and lots of people die in it. It's also my favorite action movie. And also maybe my favorite Christmas movie, but definitely my favorite action movie. Or maybe it's my favorite. Terminator is also kind of my favorite, both Terminator 1 and 2 for different reasons. And then there's Predator, which is so, 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 so good. And also directed by John McTiernan, who also directed, um... Um, rollerball. The world's most dangerous game will become deadly. <laughs> Holy shit. Do you guys remember rollerball? Yeah, so I need to make a video on rollerball. But back to what I was saying. Die Hard, Terminator, Predator. Three perfect action movies that spawned three very less than perfect action movie franchises. Now, the decline of Terminator and Predator movies has already been talked to death in the YouTube movie review slash analysis scene, so I'm not gonna bother. But what hasn't been talked to death here is the Die Hard franchise. Or maybe it has. Maybe a quick Google search could show that many others have already beat me to the topic, but maybe I don't care. Maybe I'm gonna make this video either way. Maybe I still have no idea how to do segues in my video. Maybe I'm going to cut again to explode. Why was it so good? I think the main reason is because it found the perfect combination of grit and fun. Yes, it's the perfect blend of action, thrills, drama, and comedy, but what I mean here is tone and realism. Unlike Predator or Terminator, Die Hard seems like something that could happen, and yet it still finds a way to be just as exciting and entertaining as the most ridiculous plot premises. It has real, human characters in realistic violent situations, but then it's also brimming with fun and spectacle and humor. All of the characters are great in their own way, but who matters here most is the character and the rest of the franchise to follow. He's the perfect protagonist in an action movie like this. See, because John McClane isn't some super buff masculine sex god. He isn't Arnold. He's Bruce Willis. The character John McClane is no James Bond here. James Bond is the masculine ideal. He is attractive, charming hyper-intelligent. He's an expert at everything, from driving motorcycles and military jet planes to seducing women. He's worldly, high class. He's a super secret spy. John McClane is a balding New York City cop whose marriage is falling apart. He is a typical dude that's thrown into an atypical situation. Why this movie works so well 
is because all of the tired, boring, painfully normal men in the audience can put themselves in John McClane's shoes much easier than they could a robot from the future. They can empathize and immerse themselves in John McClane's struggle. As they watch, they can think that, yeah, I would stay in the building and fight off the terrorists too. Now, I'm not saying that John McClane is a loser here. I'm only saying his chances at victory don't seem guaranteed. He is a flawed person who has to redeem himself by overcoming increasingly difficult obstacles. But these obstacles still never seem insurmountable. He isn't fighting an entire government or saving the world from nuclear destruction. He's stopping a glorified robbery. But that's not to say this task is a simple one. Hans Gruber is a cunning, ruthless force of nature. Hans is one of the best villains in movie history, but John McClane is also one of the best heroes. And this battle between them never gets out of balance. McClane never takes on 20 guys at once. He kills the bad guys one at a time, and he does it in believable ways. I mean, the first guy he kills is an accident. And I guess one could think that with each bad guy McClane dispatches, the threat against him decreases. But this isn't the case because McClane is weakened along the way. He loses his explosives right after finding them. He has to immediately ditch his machine gun. His feet get sliced open, and pretty soon he's left with only a handgun with, with two bullets in it. But then on the other side of the arena, it isn't like Hans and his men can focus all of their efforts on hunting McLean because they too are running into larger and larger obstacles. The police have shown up and they have to deal with them. They have to watch all of their hostages and manage all of the parts of their elaborate plan. But as McLean picks them off, this gets more difficult. This movie finds the perfect balance of threat and thrill here, the perfect recipe for fun and excitement without ever becoming too unrealistic. Along the way, McLean grows, redeems himself, and by the end, he is able to triumph. But not because he's an invincible robot or soldier or secret agent. Through wits and will, he defeats the bad guys. Not with glamour, but with grit, with realistic choices and actions. What I'm saying here is that even though this movie takes place in the sky, it remains grounded. Don't laugh at that joke. In fact, don't even watch the rest of this video. I don't deserve your time. I deserve a dislike. I haven't even said anything new in this video. Besides reminding you that the movie Jingle All The Way exists, I don't see how this video has provided you with anything. All I've said is that the first Die Hard is really good. And like, duh, of course it's really good. Do you see this? This just came out. You know what this is? This is an advertisement for a car battery, and that is Bruce Willis returning to the character of John McClane. Which means this guy has been reduced to shilling for auto parts stores. I guess this isn't surprising. Uh, Bruce Willis's career hasn't been doing uh, too great lately. When he's at his best, he's making movies for... Um... Who are you? Your last customer. And this is fine. This is fine. But like going back to the diehard character to sell branded batteries, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe he's been in this character too long. I mean, Arnold was able to step away and have nothing to do with his declining franchises. Well, until he wasn't. But but Bruce Willis has been in this role the whole time. He's been stuck in this prison for 30 years now. And according to this battery commercial, he isn't getting unstuck anytime soon. Now, I guess Die Hard is being remade into a show. Okay, but seriously, why does every old and once great franchise refuse to die? Okay, but on a side note, the Jack Ryan series is actually kind of good. Sort of. I mean, John Krasinski is horribly deficient when it comes to possessing Harrison Ford-esque features, but this is an unfair critique. He's in the same boat that all of us non-Harrison Fords are, so I mean, it's unfair. But now I'm becoming a bit distracted by a train of thought that surprisingly fits into the theme of this video, but God, just fuck off. Sorry, I'm off topic. Watch the Jack Ryan series on Amazon, except don't watch the second season. Only the first season is good. It, it, it's better than good. It's kind of amazing and far smarter on Middle Eastern stuff than I was expecting it to be, but sorry, I'm still off topic. Die Hard is going to be made into a show. That's all I'm really trying to say here. But I guess the silver lining to this is that at least they aren't making another film or car battery commercials because that would be bad because like Terminator and Predator, the Die Hard series became pretty bad. But I want to know more about this. So 
I'm starting a new little video series thing. Sort of like how I did that with a few of the Bond films and the Fargo TV show. I, I am going to dedicate multiple videos to this topic because I want to explore this franchise with a little depth. No matter what people say about Bruce Willis now, I think it's worth analyzing the franchise that put him on the map. What I'm saying here is that I want to get deep into Bruce Willis. I want to cradle him and caress him and tell him that everything will be okay. I want to fill him, pack him with the knowledge that it's okay, he's doing fine. It isn't his fault that the Die Hard franchise took a massive shit. I want to whisper seductively into his sagging yet scrumptious old ears that if he wants to make battery commercials and cheap right winger wet dream action flicks, then that's okay. I want to console him, help him, tell him that what happened to the Die Hard franchise is normal. It happens to every man when they get older. His flaccid ca career doesn't matter to me because it doesn't matter how soft it's become. What matters is how hard it was before because it was the hardest. I want to tell Bruce that he put the hard in Die Hard, but of course it couldn't perform like that forever. And it's fine, it's normal. After movie upon movie, somewhere along the line, the franchise lost its ability to attain something. It developed ED, excitement dysfunction, and no amount of Diagra was ever going to change. Oh, oh, okay, okay, again, dumb joke. Just give the video a dislike. I deserve it. I suck. I know I suck. But what didn't suck was Die Hard when it, when it, when it first started out. And then as it, as it, as it, as it, you know, went on longer, it got progressively worse. But, but where exactly did it get bad? This is the question my next few videos will attempt to answer. This is what this series is all about. When did the Die Hard films get so bad? And yeah, do I really need to make multiple videos to answer this question? Well, no, it happened right here. That's pretty much it. But I'm not satisfied with this answer, which means my next video analysis, or at least the next video I release that has the words hard and die in the title, will be about the Die Hard sequels, starting of course with Die Hard 2, Die Harder. And what questions will this analysis ask? What will it analyze? Well, most importantly, I aim to find out if Die Hard 2, Die Harder, is actually harder. And again, I don't need to make a full video to answer this question because everyone knows the answer is no. It's not harder. It's a glaring drop in quality from the first film and everyone knows this, but I'm still going to make the video anyways because I want to. That's what this is all really about, right? <laughs> well, that and getting to a thousand subscribers. So if you're uh, not subscribed, then, well, uh, just click the things. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm begging you, just click something, please.